Hey, everybody. So we're coming up down the stretch. But before we play those last two games of the East Division Challenge, let's take a look at the numbers through six games. So as you can see here, we have a three-way tie for first. And then there's Toronto. Poor Blue Jays. Poor, poor Blue Jays. I left New York on top for the run differential against Boston. And we see poor, again, poor Toronto, with a minus 38 run differential. Things are not going well for them. So we have Boston, astoundingly enough, actually batting 284 as a team. That's pretty impressive. And then again, we have these nice ERAs. This is actually significantly higher than it was earlier for the Yankees. Their ERA has ballooned up to 2.89. And Toronto's has actually dropped pretty significantly. It was in the double digits. And their most recent game actually dropped it to 9.72. Uh, the row team has been running away with a lot of these games. This actually happened to a lesser extent in the Central Division Challenge last year. Last year, the row team was 7-5. This year so far, the row team is 8-4. and four. And of course, who's the only row team to lose? The Blue Jays. Oh, and I added this column here right at the very end to see that Baltimore actually leads with five errors. That's a heck of a thing. All right, moving on. Let's look at the hitting stats. So, so far, we have had a total of 57 players get a plate appearance. And let's see. So far, who leads in runs scored? Chris Davis has scored eight runs, and so has Mookie Betts. So I think they're, so I think they're on top with that one. Yep, they are. That's dive for first, and second is actually DJ LeMahieu. Well, I guess third. It's DJ LeMahieu with seven runs scored. All right, hits. I think it's Gio Urshela here with nine. I believe Gio Urshela leads with nine hits. Let's see if anyone else is. There's Torres with eight. There's LeMahieu with seven. Brock Holt's got seven. Oh, that's a tie as well. So there's a tie on the top for hits between Gio Urshela and Mookie Betts. Oh, uh, and also Chris Davis and Adam Jones. So there's a four-way tie for first with hits. So we'll we'll see how the we'll see how the last two games kind of shakes up with that. All right, RBI. Who's leading in RBIs? I think it's it might be Mookie Betts again. Because Mookie Betts has eight RBI. Urshel has got six. Uh, you know what? It is. Yep. Mookie Betts leads everybody with eight runs batted in. Uh, the runaway over here is Gio Urshela with six doubles. Six. Pretty crazy, right? Yeah, no one else. Yeah, Benintendi has three. It's not even close. Uh, triples. I don't, has anyone even hit more than one triple in this tournament? No. No one has. Now, home runs is a little bit more interesting. Uh, I don't know if you can see it down here. Nah, this is in the way. Well, maybe this will help. There we go. That Gritchuk's got three home runs. Three, and I'm pretty sure he's on top. Yep, there's Holt with two, Moreland with two, Nunez with two. Up oh, once again, Mookie Betts. There he is again. He is having himself a tournament. So, yep, so, so there's your tie for, so there's your lead for home runs. Uh, Mookie Betts is tied with Randall Grichuk with three home runs each. And then this total bases category was me uh, finally figuring out how to how to uh, calculate slugging percentage here. So we have Mookie Betts with 19 total bases. And, yep, yeah, of course that's him on top. All right, who's... I mean, I'd ask about who's who's drawn the most walks, but it's not fair at this point. One and two are uh, Giancarlo Stanton and Aaron Judge. 
you know, Giancarlo is second and Walkstrom with six, and Aaron Judge leads with seven. Uh, I don't think anyone else has more than up. Oh, and then third is J.D. Martinez with five. There you go. All right, how about strikeouts? Oh, look, there's J.D. Martinez again. I believe J.D. Martinez is leading. Oh, yeah, it's definitely J.D. Martinez. J.D. Martinez is leading the tournament with nine strikeouts. Ooh, that's bad. All right, anyone get hit more than once? Yeah, Adam Jones. And there are a few hit by pitches that actually cause injuries, so, yeah, that'll happen. Okay, we got Curtis Granderson all the way down here with a 429 batting average. But again, I'm still expecting up top to be Mookie Bats. We got Luke Voigt at 357. Uh, let's see. We've got Glaber Torres at 296. DJ Zamey. Oh, never mind. Jackie Bradley Jr. at 571. That's a thing. And uh, Wilson Benamit 667. But he only played one game. So there's that. Ryan Flaherty's 429, but he's only played two. All right, where's Mookie Betts? Yeah, Mookie Betts is batting 360. His on base percentage is 414, and his slugging percentage is 760. Yeah, that's doing some work there. That is doing some work. All right, let's go. All right, let's go look for this. Uh, let's see. Where is where's Giancarlo? Oh, yeah. Here we go. Giancarlo Stanton and Aaron Judge. Let's just look at these splits for a sec. All right. Giancarlo Stanton. Batting average is 200. Slugging is 200. He's only hit singles. And his on-base percentage is 385. And then let's have a look at Aaron Judge here. He's batting 190, slugging 381, and his on-base percentage is 379. I mean, look at that difference. 190, 190 batting average, 379 on-base percentage. Yeah. That's significant. Yeah, and, and he does have a... He only has four hits. One of them was a double, and another one was a home run. So, yeah, that's... That, that's pretty that's pretty significant jump there. And let's see. I've literally only literally only run one stolen base attempt, which was successful. And who was it? Of course it was Mookie Betts. Who else would it have been? Okay, anybody commit more than one error? Let's see. There's just, just a handful of guys. Yeah. Robert Andino and Manny Machado. Yeah, Manny Machado commit two errors. What? When does that ever happen? I'm I'm just as confused by that as you are. So there's a quick look at all that. Let's have a look at the pitching numbers. All right. So now we're looking at the pitchers, and so far, 44 players have taken the mound. Let's see who has the most. I mean, Chris Sale at went he's gone 15 innings in this tournament because you know he went the distance his first game so that'll do it let's see yeah nathan Eovaldi is about to go just like i just like uh masahiro tanaka is about to go for uh for new york and i think it's Wei and chen who's up next for baltimore i think i think I don't remember off the top of my head. Which is why it's written down somewhere. Let's see, who's given up all the hits? Let's see, Aaron Sanchez has given up 18 hits, but he also made two starts. That probably has something to do with that. And Ryan Borucki has given up 16. Again, he's also given up. He's also gone two starts. Paxton's given up 10. Price given up 11. He got roughed up in his first game and pitched beautifully his second. Chris Tillman, 12 hits. Let's see. Who has all the earned runs? So there's seven earned runs for Chris Tillman. There's five for Paxton. That's pretty good. There's six for Jay Happ, which is not good because that was one start. Uh, and then there's poor Aaron Sanchez down here. I mean, you got, look at that. 16 earned runs 
in nine and a third innings. You know that one's going to get ugly. Okay, who's issued all the walks? Not nope, there's Sanchez at six. Uh, I believe it's David Price. Yep, it's David Price. David Price has issued nine walks to lead everybody. And then strikeouts. The leader is actually Luis Severino, who struck out 24 batters. He was utterly fantastic in this in this challenge. And then Chris Sale struck out 19. Price has struck out 16. Yeah, good stuff. Uh, the only problem for Severino is he ended up being a little susceptible to home run ball. He's one of a few pitchers who has given up three home runs. So there's J Hap, there's Severino, and there's Chris Tillman. Of course, the difference is Chris Tillman and Luis Severino gave up three home runs over two starts, and Jay Happ did that over one. Let's see who's who's doing all the plunking? Uh, Aaron Sanchez. There it is. Three hit batsman. That's no good. That is definitely no good. Let's see anybody with more than one wild pitch? Yes, Jason Hamill with two. Again, not good. So the highest ERA technically is still Joe Kelly. Uh, he's only pitched once, did not get it out, and so his ERA is infinite. Uh, but besides him, who's got the garish ERA? Poor Jake Patrichka. Look at this thing. Look at that. 37.8. 37.8. That's just nuts. And you got Marcus Stroman with an ERA of almost 24. Aaron Sanchez with an ERA of over 15. Joe Biagini with an ERA. There, now you can see it. 11 and a quarter. Yeah, things have gone very badly for them. Sung Juan O's ERA is 10.13. And that's actually an improvement. And J Hap again, 10.13. Yeah, things went badly. Tanaka is putting his two and a half ERA on the line next. Brandon Workman's ERA is 27. Now, there's Troy Patton up here with the ERA of 13 and a half. Pedro Strope is over 10. Uh, Wei In Shen's ERA is 1.23. That's, that's pretty great. Let's see. Where's. Where's David Price? David Price's ERA is 3.27. And having a, eh, okay, not very good second start, bumped Chris Sale's ERA up to 1.8. That is a thing. He was, I mean, that's explicitly how good he was in his first start. Right there. So let's see. Records here. Win-loss records. Hamill's 2-0. Tillman's 1-1. Chris Sale and David Price are both 1-1. James Paxton's 2-0. Luis Severino's 1-1. Adovino got a win. Ryan Borucki is tagged for two losses. Aaron Sanchez is 0-2. Yeah. Stroman's 0-1. John Axford actually wound up taking the loss in an earlier game. Um, the errors column is on here because of one day where there were two errors, both committed by pitchers. And those are the only two so far. Uh, not a whole lot of saves. Uh, Chapman's got two, and that's it, really. All right. So again, just a just just a quick rundown of just sort of where things are statistically after six. So, how's this tournament gonna end? There's only one way to find out. I'll see you Monday for game thirteen.